Gen AI is taking the industry by storm and Snowflake Cortex is right at the center of bringing all of the generative AI and large language model capabilities to your fingertips. The use cases are bound from sentiment analysis to understanding text, building rag-based applications. In today's demo, we're going to jump in, see some scenarios, show what's available and set the stage for future demonstrations, leveraging all these uh, highly capable functions within the Snowflake uh, infrastructure. As always, links to the documentations will be in the description below, so do check that out. Uh, now, to take advantage of these functions, essentially, if you can write to uppercase or do a simple function call in Snowflake, you now have the power and the ability to leverage generative AI and large language models in Snowflake. It's that powerful. So here, Snowflake Cortex, the complete, this is one of the functions available. You can always read the documentations for all the list of functions available. We complete, select your model, and you give it a prompt, a very basic prompt to tell us what the large language model is. Again, if you can make a simple function call and click the run button, you now have the power of Llama 70B chat model right within your Snowflake infrastructure. This runs in your Snowflake uh, environment. Your data is now going to a third-party service, a third-party API, and hoping that they treat your data well. Hope is not a strategy in this case. You want to bring the model to your data and keep it secure. The results generated for us. Go ahead, explore all the other models available in addition to the Llama 70B chat, Mistra, ADEX 7B, Gamma. And as you can imagine, the list of these models is only going to grow. That completed successfully. We see the name of the model and we see the response. Now, the goal for this demonstration isn't to show or to test in a rigorous way how these models perform, but you give us an idea that this is all available. Llama 70B chat, a little bit of a buzz, a mixture, more concise, but you can read the response in the mixture, very similar. And Gamma is also sort of verbose. Again, I'm not testing the power of the models, but just to show you that these models are available to take advantage of. Next, some more interesting scenarios. As you can imagine, for most users, making simple function calls is good to play with. But what you want to do is apply this to very specific use cases within your organization or within your industry. In this case, a common use case might be securing data. Security is uh, top of mind for many organizations as they jump into the realm of generative AI. Or even in legacy use cases, there's always a need to keep data secure, obfuscated. And now Gen AI can help us with that. But here, some very sensitive data, uh, social security, phone number, address, zip code. In this case, Llama 2, uh, 7B chat, or with a simple prompt, mask any PII information you have. That's it. No more, no less. Just go in and mask it. This will run with any lock. We get a response back without the PII information showing up. Voila. The scenario could be building a lower environment for your dev team. You want them to have data. You don't want to give out your sensitive information. You might be data sharing, trying to do analytics with your providers or with your uh, business partners. You don't want them to have your sensitive data. Now, with one simple function call, you have the anonymized data sets. And obviously, you can dial this in with prompt engineering or maybe training your own model too as well. But there is... With generative AI and LLMs, these types of scenarios and use cases are now possible. All right, this is good. Another scenario in the realm of masking and securing data is generating uh, synthetic data. Again, you're trying to build an app. You need synthetic data of your customer profile, user profile. You don't want to just generate random strings. Use Gen AI to give you synthetic data as such. I can put this now into a table and use that for my dev team to begin developing. Powerful. Now, what we've seen here is uh, a, a simple scenario of making function calls. I think most of us watching to this point should be able to make those function calls. I hope you are making those calls actually. Now, the next thing we want to do is thinking about how we can take that model and bring that to the data sets that matters to your organization. This could be your product data, inventory data, CRM data, ERP data all sitting within your secure Snowflake environment. In this scenario, we have a product ID, product name, product type, uh, a representation of uh, a data set within an organization might look like. The, the company is making products, products are being sold, customers are calling to a call center, they're complaining about that, 
we happen to have this gold mine of data within our Snowflake environment. What can we do with this? That's the question. One thing we can do is zero in on what the customers are complaining about. These are the things that move the needle when it comes to the bottom line, making the customers happy. I can see the product with a simple prompt. What is the root cause of the customer complaint? We can see this was a neurological condition the customer complained about. Based on this, zero in on that department or that team, what is going on, solve the problems for that customer. If these functions are available for us, the sky really is the limit in terms of what we can do. Now, let's actually bring this home to see a broader a scenario of how this could play out. Here, I'm going to go through and evaluate almost all the functions that are available in Cortex to give us a scenario. Again, we have the product data and the customer complaints in the same table. What if we go in and tie some sentiment analysis to see how customers feel about the particular product? While this is running, I'm going to explain the code here shortly. The first case here is essentially doing some sentiment analysis with a few lines of code. Before Cortex, before this Gen AI rise, sentiment analysis back in 2013, 2014, 2015 used to be challenging to do. You essentially had to have PhD level understanding of natural language processing to do something like this. Now, every analyst in the organization, if they can make a simple function call, can begin building their own sentiment analysis solution. How powerful and revolutionary that is. Here, we'll summarize the calls, look for the root causes like before, also do translations. Translations is notoriously difficult to do, but again, with a simple function call, we can do translate. We can even compose a personalized email to send out to the customers based on what they complain about and what the customer purchase, because we have all this data within our environment. So I'll just give you an idea from the table format, product name, our customer review, that's the sentiment analysis. A short summary of the call, we've extracted that. The condition telling us what the customer complained about, depending on the localization or how global your system is, we may generate copies for different languages, French, English, German, which we've done in French. Last but not least, we are generating a personalized email to that customer, thanking them for the product they bought and maybe even recommending other products for the customer to buy. Doing this all in less than a dozen lines of code. This is what you can do now in 2024 with the power of generative AI at your fingertips. And we are still at the beginning. We haven't even scratched the surface of what's possible. And one thing to note about this too is this is all running inside of the Snowflake environment. The processing is happening. The data doesn't leave. So for companies that are security conscious, which most are, or everybody should be in today's day and age, knowing that that model is running inside of your environment and doesn't rely on third-party APIs and making network calls should be uh, a peace of mind for many organizations. Now we've scratched this office. In future demos, we're going to go in and see how we can continue this generative AI uh, capabilities to build highly customized rack-based applications, retriever augmented generations applications in Streamlit we can deploy to our customers in the field to chat with documents, chat with PDFs, chat with their unstructured data. The sky really is the limit. Hopefully this has given us a good idea. If you haven't tried this yet, I'll highly encourage you. Links to all of this will be in the description below. Go ahead and try this out. This is the future with generative AI and large language models. As always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section below. I'll see what I can do. This has been Fru with Demo Hub. I'll see you in the next demo. Thank <laughs> you.